Good morning, everybody. Evening, whatever. <laughs> uh, good evening, Bobby. Oh, wait, I can't barely hear you. Hold on, let me see what's uh, wrong. Hi, Bobby. Good evening. It's good evening here, but good morning for you. Yes. Monday morning. Yay. <laughs> uh, can you hear me now? I can hear you much better. Yes. Oh, okay. I thought it was me. I have trouble sometimes with the uh, audios on Zoom, but I figured it out. I was on a presentation on Friday and it was horrible. It was a metaverse presentation and everything the speaker tried to do fell apart. Like he was getting kicked off the Zoom call or the Google Meet call. Uh, the demonstration didn't work. I was like, oh, you poor thing. Oh. <laughs> it's all it was awful. Hyperledger only or like some other meet? It was um on like a meetup. Um, so they use that that meetup format, which um Hyperledger uses as well. So what the meetup meetup is, is let me see if I can get to show you an example. Uh while everybody's filtering in, let me see if I can. Give you a little little lesson on something here, which I'm sure you most people already know, but it's interesting when you hear it kind of in a uh, <clears throat> okay, so let me share my screen. Pull this up. Okay, so what you're seeing is my computer being very slow in loading, but this is a software program called Meetup. Yeah, and I am there in this, like, I'm a member. Yeah, so even the Linux Foundation uses Meetup. I use Meetup. I'm a paying customer, so I can get as many groups as I want together. So, oh. like, Ledger Academy, there's my logo. Um, so I'm signed. You can use Meetup and set up small meetups, uh, complimentary, but it, it doesn't stay in it, you know, like there's all, it's just for preview kind of purposes. But once you like pay to be a meetup participant, you get certain um, things that happen. So I'm just gonna show you um, my groups for a second. So I administer some groups and I'm a member of some groups. So for instance, I do different things. So this group is when I'm actually charging people to come sit in a class. So this is a paid group. So if I do an event for this group, um, and I'll actually just mm -hmm. go in there, um, it is uh, paid and it is um, done all through Ledger Academy. So you can see I have 400 members and I do a lot of uh job uh related find matching jobs and, and participants and, and and companies and that kind of stuff with that meetup and then i have a few others as well this is a great place um to network it is possibly the best place to network in you know linkedin's great but you don't really talk to the people or the, the, the meetups there aren't really as robust um, so what now Hyperledger does is, so I have Hyperledger Princeton uh, blockchain for business. So I can run a meetup uh, here for Princeton anytime I want. Um, has to do with something, you know, uh, Hyperledger related. Um, also, which is the benefit of this meetup is David Boswell from Hyperledger, once COVID hit, you know, rationalized that why is this... Um, constrained by geographic boundaries, why don't we try to network all these events? So at the beginning of the week, or you'll notice if you're a member of more than one meetup, you might get double invites to what Hyperledger Foundation puts out as meetups. And they have great meetups. They have a little introduction. So if you don't know where your Hyperledger meetup is for everyone on this call, find the closest or start your own. It's very simple. David will walk you through it. 
Um, so for instance, this is this afternoon and I will be attending this one. <clears throat> Um, it looks like only two people are going, but that's only two people from this group. This will probably be, you know, over 100 people on this call because it's one, oh, 248 people on this call because um, it's a network event. So again, that's very powerful. So that's one of the things I want this group to do. And I also have a, uh, one more group. I've never done anything with the, uh, metaverse group but they lost their leader and i just took the group on um but this is the group that started it all and almost has two thousand members um and it's blockchain and ai and this is the one that i want to well all three actually um and i want us to set up a network event more towards the end of the summer based on our you know like kind of taking the presentation we're going to do this week and and giving it to all the public in this network event so you know and documentation out of all the mentorship programs onboarding and documentation seem to be the one that people gravitated to because in my personal opinion a lot of people want to know what hyperledger is about but they're not coders so they're afraid to join any group because they're afraid they don't have coding skills or these meetups you know you don't need to have coding skills you're just going as a participant so it's a great way to get people into the community um anyway that's the little lesson so uh mm -hmm. what uh the meetup. So we're going to do the presentation this week. Um, and then from that, each of the committees are going to work on, you know, enhancing that so that it becomes a deliverable instead of a, here's what we want to do. Um, and then we're going to do a network event at the end of the summer uh, where you guys present, you know, what you've done with these different subcommittees for documentation for the community so that anybody, like even if, I mean, I think that's gonna be the most powerful one because for people who come to that and wanna write a white paper or wanna write a case study, um, again, they're gonna realize they don't need to be coders to do that. They can just come in and you know document something or create a user guide or even just read a user guide. So again, I think that that's gonna be very powerful. Um, we are recording this call, so I should get started with at least the antitrust policy that is displayed on your screen. If everyone can see that, please take a moment to read it over. If you uh, need more information, there's a link to the code of conduct. Participants. And I'm going to turn again the meeting over to Runima. Um, all we're really doing today is just introducing people on the call and you know, however you feel, Arunama, you need to practice for Thursday. That's great. Um, again, the onboarding people who are on the call, I got this email from David. Yeah. I it... Go ahead. John had shared the, this thing as well that J David asked like, if we need any help. So I had sent a follow-up mail and I think you are also in CC. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. I'll have to try. I haven't really reached out for my email yet this morning. Um, I was traveling all weekend, so I just got back. Yeah. So uh, following on this message by David, I had made about all the things that we need and, you know, um, everything that I required uh, since we like uh, John has not joined the call now, but we have another call every week, which is on Wednesday, because, you know, we have to work a lot on onboarding. So he has scheduled. So there we discussed about this thing and uh, I had mailed, but uh, right now I didn't receive any uh, mail back from David or Ben. Okay. Yeah. I, I think that's going to be your biggest hurdle for onboarding is getting cooperation. So in, I would just, in my opinion, focus on those landing points that you have complete control over. Yeah, as you said in last meet, uh, I discussed with John regarding this that, you know, Ben is not, we don't uh, have instant communication with Ben. So the things we discuss a lot of things and we'll, we'll like this week, we'll be working on the design changes. Since uh, you had shared that Canva link, based on that, we can match the theme and we'll be working on the design theme now with the team. 
Yeah, and I wouldn't be afraid, again, the way Hyperledger works, everybody's kind of really laid back in their chores here because it is a foundation um, and, and, and it's a slower beat with a foundation um, than if it was just an enterprise where everybody was getting paid. So it's definitely a different um, pace than usually in business. And I think that it would benefit you if you, your team went ahead and like almost gave Ben wireframes for the um, onboarding button on the website, you know, like say, oh, Ben, we want a button for onboarding and we want it to look like this. Cause I think that that's what the user guide people are going to do in the, this group for uh, when you go to the website and you hit that library button. I mean, we need to figure out how that looks um, from a documentation point of view and then bring it to the, you guys on onboarding and saying, you know, when you hit that button library, here's what it should look like. Um, mm -hmm. That kind of thing. So I would not be afraid to, again, do the design work and send it to Ben and say, this would be great if the website looked like this, or this would be great if the start here looked like this, or whoever is in control of each of those. Okay, anyway, so I'm sorry, I'm babbling again. No, 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 no. Yeah, I actually take, took up your, you know, whatever you said that there should be some wireframes for your, uh, the users, right? You mentioned yep. Yeah, like say this is this is the way the website looks like now, and here is the start here button. Here's what the onboarding group suggests happens once you click that button. <laughs> and I am sure he will take it under consideration because again, that's the beat of how a foundation works. They wait for for suggestions like that. Yeah, it's the same just like you, John also recommended some design changes. So he said that we can make, you know, a navigation based on user personas for the yep. start here page. So that's what uh, right now, you know, uh, there are some members also who are in onboarding team uh, on the call right now. So today I'll be introducing them to all the things that I had discussed. And this week we'll be working on that design part that you're talking about. Perfect. Beautiful. And uh, again, I'm going to, so I've introduced myself. Let me start editing this page here and I will turn the meeting over to Arunima to go through the list of introductions. And then I guess just go over the presentation. So it's all you Arunima. Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, coming to the introductions, uh, let's start with Akanksha. So Akanksha, you can go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah, sure. So hello, everyone. Myself, Akanksha, and I am LFX mentee for uh, Hyperledger Onboarding Mentor Mentory Project. And I'm also contributing to Hyperledger Documentation Project. Uh, these two projects are focused on this call. And uh, I have been part of Hyperledger community since past two months now, uh, since May, I, uh, three months, I would say, since July also counted. And I I had worked and uh, with Bobby and John. These are our mentors. And I would love to be work with you all and uh, for the upcoming months and uh, uh, contribute to my best. Yeah. That's great, Akanksha. Thank you so much. Uh, next, we have Anasua in this call. So Anasua, I think uh, I'm seeing you for the first time. So you can go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. Uh, good evening. Actually, I wasn't uh, attending the uh, task force meetings uh, in between. Uh, hi, Bobby. Uh, like, uh, well, actually, I was attending the before this mentor mentorship program uh, Kick started before that I was attending these calls and I'm the founder and uh, director of Bini World Innovations Private Limited and one of our project like uh, Bini BFT it is uh, being uh, selected as a uh, CLP project so I'm a mentor over there so when I uh, saw that I got a mail regarding this because in between uh, for two weeks when I tried to uh, join the meeting I think the meeting timings has been shifted so Mondays I couldn't uh, join the meeting so when I uh, got the invitation I thought okay I will start back again and I am not a mentee I am a mentor. Uh, that's great and Aswa thank you so much for uh, attending the call. Thank you. Welcome. 
So uh, next we have Ashwin. Ashwin, you can go ahead. Uh, hello, please. yeah. Myself, Ashwin. Uh, I also I couldn't attend any of the meetings because of some college work, you know. I have attended one of the meetings, and uh, I am in a bunch of team. I'm a contributor here, and uh, yeah, looking forward to work with you all. Thank you. That's great, Ashwin. Thank you for uh, attending the call. Uh, next we have Balbir Singh. So Balbir, you can go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello everyone, myself Balveer Singh Rao. Uh, Akansha, I have applied for LFX Menti, but I was not selected. And later Akansha reached us out and uh, uh, introduced us about the cohort. So I joined that group and in that group today, Akansha posted that we have a meeting. So I joined. That's great, Balveer. I, I thank you for introducing yourself. and. Yeah, you will surely find out some way in which you can contribute to the projects because we really need some folks who can you know, help us improve the documentations and everything. So sure. thanks a lot for joining. Yeah, looking forward to contribute. Yeah, so next we have Kajal Kumari. Kajal, you can go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Kajal. I'm, I'm the... Uh, committee chair member of uh, uh, the templates so like uh, recently i was identifying the projects which need our documentation needs so i talked to the caliper maintainer uh, bobby could you please switch to my mentorship page where we have to write our what they are of course project. just give me one second Oh uh, yeah, so I uh yeah, it's uh right below. I uh I had a conversation with them on this call, like what uh we can do for Caliper. So he mentioned some points related to uh that I have mentioned that. Let me scroll, please. Yeah. These are the three he said, uh, like what Caliper need right now. That's a really good point you made there. I never really thought about versioning and documentation. Uh, you know, it is tedious how to, you know, maintain the documentation through version controls as well. Um, so thank you for, for pointing that out. Uh, like I was going through their uh, documentation thing and uh, it it is quite good, but I didn't understand the their last point. Like they want to export this like a PDF. So like, how can we do that? Uh, like fabric dogs have. So if I'm understanding, you're asking if there is a feature in like the make the docs or read the docs that you can convert that to a PDF. Yes. Yes. That's a great question. Um, I have no idea that the answer to that is, um, but I will find that out. That's a really good question. Okay. So almost you can template the PDF and almost make it like it, it's an instant manuscript. Yes, I can do that like only. Yes. 
Oh, great. Thank you. Uh, I'll do more, uh, more research on this. And also, like, uh, I uh, talked to the Bevel uh, mentee. He is doing a uh, right, uh, and right now he doesn't need any help from our side. So this is all uh, about me. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot, Kajal, for uh, doing so much research and giving us those insights. Uh, for next, we have uh, Tripur. So Tripur, you can go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tripur, and uh, I'm working on Solang, uh, and I'm crea like creating their, like not creating, but yeah, uh, making some changes into their user document, uh, existing one, and also side by side, also creating a uh, like standard user guide uh, changer so that uh, if they want to use it, they can in the HyperEdger community. So, Bobby, if you can shift to my page. I'm trying. <laughs> no issue. So I initially, uh, like in, in the, like on the top already that uh, user documentation improvement that is needed for Solang and that we need to make some changes to the introduction as it is very basic and it, uh, the users who will be stumbling on, on the page will not be able to understand at all uh, if they are beginners and they don't know anything about uh, the technology or coding itself. So yeah, it will be very difficult for them what the product do and uh, what they are trying to say. And they, I, when I was going through the guide, uh, the user guide, I noticed that there are not many visuals that can he help the reader to understand what the code will look like if they run it and what will happen, what's the flow chart like of the system that they are like building their stuff on and all that stuff. So I've suggested three free options so that we can build some doc like diagrams or anything that flow charts and uh, like what step comes after what step and make it more interactive and uh, now i'm going into like section wise improvement so i have yet uh, done only one which is installing solang and my remark was on it like uh, they are very good but at the same time they are very difficult to understand as i was uh, installing it uh, like on my computer i was not able to because it was like uh, as a user and who a person who is not much into coding or do who knows everything about coding will uh, can understand that but the person who is who don't know anything about coding will not be able to do that so my improvement was like we can uh, make uh, it simple and um, add specific screenshot of the devices like if uh, they have like mac what uh, the output will look like and if we are on the linux what it will look like and the language we are using it's kind of very technical and i wanted to make suggestion that we can make it simpler so i will uh, like go on, get, go into the meeting next time and suggest all these things with the solang community and we will uh, discuss how we will move forward at the same time i'm also making the standard guide which i'm making it on my git book i'm creating a git book so i if i can share my screen will that be okay bobby yeah so of course i'm at by the, the way by the way i'm clapping great job um i was i was sitting here saying while you were doing that oh please be making a, a template for everyone else to follow what you're doing and boom here it is so thank you <laughs> yeah i'm at the very initial stage so yeah the 
uh, how I will proceed is this. Uh, first of all, a page. Uh, this is just introduction. What is user documentation? If someone is new to technical writing and they don't know what is it, I will add more. It's just a simple. I have added just simple definition. Nothing more. Nothing less. Like it is a user guide for consumer, helping them navigate the product properly while assisting them with any difficulty that arise. So will that with that keeping in mind, the person should write their user document or make changes to it. And then I will write the steps. Like first, you have to download your product and use it, and uh, then you start writing it. Start testing the product that uh, what is happening, how do we proceed, and. Like I will add more steps. I'm at the initial stage. Then I will do specific sections. Like after, uh, first step will be like writing about introduction. Then writing about setup and more. So I'm I'm doing that right now. It's not completed. And then I will add more things. And I will share the links with all of you so that you can also make changes. Uh, like suggest changes, and we can make it more, uh, like helpful to the community as we can together. uh so yeah that's what i am doing right now and this is my progress uh that's amazing tripur really great work i uh, do have some doubts like yeah, sure. uh, uh arunima what about uh, the like i didn't get any Uh, announcement on the chair thing. If uh, we have done it, I have missed it. Ah, uh, so regarding a uh, chair thing of what? Can you please tell me? Like uh, the Bobby mentioned earlier that we will be making chairs for the user template and then like at the specific user documentations and all that stuff. So we didn't discuss anything about that. Okay, so ah, uh, I think ah. Uh... Let me see. So, uh, your uh, your for a le okay. Let me just go ahead and see it. Ah, uh, so um, since you are doing the presentation for uh GitHub read the talk, so you can be the chair of that group, right? I think that's not a group. Uh, that. that was the comment that bobby wrote at that time the there are only five uh, groups in that that is uh, templates and uh, onboarding user guide best practices but there's two different sections to a git the github documentation when you approach it from a community perspective the first one is when i am a project maintainer and i'm going into the labs and i'm creating my first github repository there's a template for that what needs to be there but there's not a template for what the next step is like when you're in labs and you want to take your lab project and 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 make it an incubated project in the community or an incubated project to a graduated project so those templates don't exist so that's the first github templates the other section of the github is about taking that material that the maintainers already created and making it into readable user guides and hyperledger offers some tooling practices they have i think they use make the docs or read the docs i'm not sure what david suggests but that's what this task force that section of this task force is going to research is what does hyperledger offer We already know what each one uses. We have a graph in this documentation task force um, documentation somewhere of what everyone in the community is using right now. And as a documentation task force deliverable, we are going to give them suggestions on how to take what the maintainers created and make user docs. And even adding that PDF suggestion is like a great idea for that section. So there's two different. GitHub, and we have you down for once the GitHub repositories are completed. What read the doc, make the docs do you use to um, suggest the community uses so that the end user documentation is Hyperledger look and feel? If that makes sense and and 
and, and if you still want to be a, a chair on that, that, you know, discuss that with the Runima, but that was the point of having that broken out into two different tasks. Okay, okay. I got it. Thank you, Bobby. And uh, I do have one more question. Uh, like in the early meetings, you also mentioned that uh, if we are working on the project and uh, we will get some uh, college credits that we can show and all that type of stuff. So was it related to this project or were you talking about some other one? Um, there are no college credits given out from Hyperledger Community in any way, shape or form. Um, what it was, was there is... Um, and I'm working with Min on that. There is a learning, um, and I'm not sure maybe Arunima has more information, but it's a learning center. And this project is going to be in there so that you would get like a badge from Hyperledger saying that you completed and were a part of this mentor learning ship program. Um, the only difference is uh, it wouldn't be compensated but you would okay. get the same credit for your resume, LinkedIn, for your networking. You know, you'll be able to go and speak about this. You'll be able to, you know, become a speaker because you've had this interaction with the Hyperledger community. Okay, okay. Yeah, got it. Thank you. Okay, so for regarding that part, even I don't have much idea about the learning program, but what I can do is that I can share Min's uh, email ID with a uh, with you and uh, you can uh, send a mail to her asking about it. I think she will be the correct person to uh, provide the correct guidance to you regarding this about the yeah, no, no, I'm already, I've already talked to Min. Um, so all I'm waiting for is her to set us up as a project and then I'll send everyone in this call a link so that if uh, they want to enroll, which everyone should, you're doing the work for it, uh, enroll, just can enroll in that learning section. Um, Oh, or, that's great. Yeah, Bobby, yeah, so we're working on it. We just need to get it. We need to get it so you guys can enroll. Yeah, I just wanted to add on that. So um, since uh, there are certain people who wanted to, you know, pa uh, take part in the uh, Hyperledger uh, project. So I also searched up and saw that collaborative learning program that was there. But I think so the deadline was 25th June for that uh, since I was checking out for our projects for documentation and onboarding and those were not part of collaborative program. So their deadline had crossed like it was 25th June, but I'm not sure if that's the same thing you talked men about. Uh, or it's a different It is. It is. And we're going to get in there. We're going to get past. We're going to slide in past the date. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So uh, it would be just documentation or we can get the onboarding project as well in there. Um, I can uh, hopefully get both. Um, oh. I will be reaching out to her again today. So let me find out. And then by next week, we'll definitely have that set up. Yeah. Thank you so much. Since, you know, uh, since to, if uh, they, these all are contributing, so they'll definitely help. It will help them to not only grow their network, but also uh, showcase it in the resume. Exactly. Bobby, I have a question. Uh, Go ahead. GitHub templates and only templates. They are different. I like. I have a confusion. Okay, like so what, now the, the templates, the templates yes. that that this refers to. Let me see if I can find them quick enough. Has to do more with. I'm going to be guessing the, the onboarding button libraries and the templates have to do more with this information. So if I want to write a white paper, we had this little white paper standards. It was done four years ago. Um, it probably needs to be done more user friendly because if I was someone trying to write a white paper and I saw this I'm not sure if I would know how to use it I'm not sure if this is a good format anymore for white papers um, so that's what the that section of the template is doing it's going over all of these and I'll drop this link in the chat if I can get it hold on copy so now the learning materials working group has been uh, archived 
So it really isn't something that people can access anymore. So David has asked us to take what we think of these templates and make it into like almost like a button on that library so that when someone in the community needs to create something, they can go to these templates and say, oh, I'm creating. And even that GitHub template will be in here. It will be a part of the overall, but that one you won't have to create from scratch. Um, none of them you really have to create from scratch. You just have to look at them all and redo them to make them current. Um, so again, there's, um, Here's another one, use case standards. So if you want to, and I encourage this one, everyone who, who is implementing a use case should use this format. But again, this is not user-friendly. <laughs> this is crazy. If you ask me, I wouldn't know how to do a use case from this. So I hope that answered your question. Uh, there are any like examples where uh, people have used these templates? Like yes. Article. Yes. There, the labs templates. I'm, I'm not sure if that was your question, but what do the labs use as templates? Um, let's see. Oh, I think I just. I never find what I need when I look this way, but. No, it's not here. There's a section in the GitHub for, for the blank lab repository. It is listed on our um, uh, page somewhere. Let me just see if I can find it. But yeah, that should be one of the templates in our list as well. Um, I think it's under the section for GitHub. Give me just a minute. Got to make a commit. And again, uh, like not to jump topic, I, I can't locate that, but I will definitely try to find it before the end of the meeting. Um, like I'm looking for that now, that's the whole point of this is so that people don't have to search for things anymore and so that they're easy to uh, grab and find. Um, but it is in here. Um, I hope that answered your question. Okay, okay, I would, I would search for that. Thank you. Okay, so um, we had Victoria in the call, but she had to uh, drop off uh, because uh, uh, she maybe she had some work. So I will connect with her later. And just to confirm, uh, Bobby, we, uh, we will have the presentation on 13th, right? On Thursday. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Um, so if you want for the rest of the meeting, just go over the presentation. It's all up to you now. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. So I'll stop sharing and you can finish out the meeting. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, uh, yeah. So Bobby, just a second. I'm sorry for interrupting. I'm not popping so, off. Uh, I just wanted to ask one thing from you. Uh, I had mailed Ben regarding this. So any uh, any update or anything uh, so that I can, you know, connect with Ben or David on a call because we really need their opinions for the, there are three different things that we discussed, uh, me and John discussed. That was first like analyzing the traffic flow, the uh, high traffic pages, like analyzing the high traffic pages so that we can implement it into the onboarding project and work on that. So all these things we just can't, you know, uh, discuss like that. So is there any way or any uh, meeting that we can join to connect with them? Send me the link and I'll be there. Yeah, okay. Uh, but like Ben and uh, uh, David, since they haven't responded yet. Um, 
When is your onboarding call? Uh, it, we have it. Uh, we have it on Wednesdays. Like it will be on Wednesday. Um, the timings would be uh, nine thirty to uh, ten thirty Indian Standard Time, which would be I guess twelve p.m. According to you. 12 p.m. I, I, I'm unfortunately this Wednesday I'm speaking to the Penn State Alumni Association okay. so I will be in Philadelphia giving a, a presentation um, but any other day this week how about um, if you can throw it out there at your meeting you know, I can do right after the TOC presentation so that would be Thursday at and 11. Thursday. Okay cool. Or so before that... if it's easier for you guys oh well they're in Colorado and David's in California so he's not getting up at five <laughs> exactly no exactly no he actually wrote in the mail that he uh, that John forwarded that uh, whatever time that you know he'll try to reschedule so I said I replied him that whatever is uh, his you know convenience according to his convenience he can tell tell the slots so uh, I'm not sure when he will reply back but I really need to connect with uh, Ben and David regarding the uh, onboarding project and it would be really good if you'll be also there with John. Yeah. Yeah. But I, again, I, I don't envy you having to coordinate with the um, website people and, and the hype, you know, because again, they, they move very slowly, but it, <laughs> I would keep going on what you envision and then work with them to plug it in. Okay. Okay, thank you, Bobby. Uh, and yeah, surely I'll tell you the, I'll mail you the timings and everything that I'll reschedule the meeting. Yes, and I will see you at the TOC presentation. Surely. Bye, Bobby. Okay, so before I get started with the presentation, just let me tell you all something. If any of you have exams or you think that, you know, if, if uh, you need help uh, from me regarding uh, any help or any assistance from me re regarding any of the tasks, then you know, feel free to let me know on either on LinkedIn or through a mail. I will be more than happy to help you out with the tasks. So I just wanted to let all of you know that. Now coming to the presentation, let me start sharing my screen. Okay. So. So uh, let's start with the presentation. So uh, starting with the plus slide. Okay, so hello everyone. My name is Arunima Chaudhary and I'm the committee chair of the documentation task force and also an LFX mentee under this project. Uh, first of all, I want to express my gratitude to Bobby for entrusting me with this uh, role and I'm truly excited about the work that we all will be doing together as a team. So clear and comprehensive documentation is essential for uh, any successful project. It not only helps the developers understand and contribute to the projects, but also facilitates the adoption and success of our projects in the wider community. To ensure that our hyperledger projects also have the best possible documentation, we uh, we have six uh, six subcommittees that will be working under the documentation standards task force, and each group will provide uh, assistance to the projects in a specific area. So the six subcommittees are GitHub templates, GitHub read the docs templates, best practices onboarding and user guides. Also, all the subgroups will work collaboratively to address the documentation gaps and assist the project mentees. Some of the shared objectives of the documentation task force includes to enhance the overall quality and consistency of the documentation across all the projects, to provide and guide, uh, to provide uh, support and guidance to the project teams in utilizing the available resources effectively, uh, streamline the documentation process for better efficiency and productivity, and also to empower the users through user-friendly and comprehensive documentation. So I look forward to working closely with all of you in the coming months in shaping, refining, and standardizing the documentation process within the Hyperledger. And um, 
now i would like to introduce the chairs of each of the subgroups uh, who will be contributing uh, to the documentation task force uh, in the upcoming months uh, starting with the github templates group uh, kian luk uh, are you there on the call okay so we currently don't have Chan Luca in the call. So moving on to the next slide. Uh, GitHub read the docs. Uh, Tripur, you can go ahead and uh, give us a brief idea of the subgroup and what are the work you have been doing since the last few months. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tripur Joshi and I am a technical writer and researcher. And uh, I will be contributing to the uh, user guide and uh, uh, like making a standard uh, user documentation uh, guideline for everyone who wants to update their existing user guides. And I'm also working on Solang and that is the first project we are working on. And then after that, we will mo uh, move towards other projects so that uh, uh, they can also get help from us and uh, as much as we can improve their user guide and their, the experiences of the users and uh, at the same time uh, how we are improve uh, like uh, aiming to support the community is making that standard uh, template for everyone to use and so that they don't have to go around and um, take any uh, like read other documents to know how to update their user guides and uh, that's all we are doing and we hope that it will be more useful for everyone and we can all contribute to it. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Tripur, for introducing the GitHub Read the Talks to all of us. So next, uh, next we have uh, the templates group and uh, Kajal will let us know, I'll give us a brief idea of the, what the templates uh, group is doing and also what she has been doing for the past few months. Kajal, you can go ahead. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Kajal Kumari, and I'm a final year student. So I am an Android developer and a technical writer. I have contributed in various open source programs in development and documentations. And I have also done a UI UX uh, design. So like I have, uh, uh, I have talked to uh, some of the projects of Hyperledger where we can uh, serve them as a documentation where they need any documentation uh, help. So I have talked to the caliper and a uh, bevel maintainers, but I have also identified uh, Cacti and NNCRIPS where they need a documentation help. So I would be uh, like helping them in that and uh, talking about my uh, uh, project uh, in a, a documentation task force. So I'm the chair member of templates. We'll be providing a, a suitable uh, template for all the needs like uh, for the graphics or for uh, like uh, GitHub or uh, any uh, need uh, documentation uh, uh, needed. So like, uh, the templates will be standard and uh, consist the approach to documentation across various hyperledger projects at the various stage of the project life cycle. And like we know that uh, all the uh, need of all the projects it will be unique, unique and specified. So the template will be unique and specified. Like we have a white paper template, we have graphic uh, template, and we have a user a case study templates. So we will be developing a customized template for every group. And by offering these well-designed templates, we strive to streamline the documentation process and enable project team to focus more on building, building ensuring vital information that is documented, documented effectively and this thing will smooth the onboarding process for the newbie or those people who are not in uh, tech. So, thank you. 
Thank you so much, Kajal, for giving us a brief idea of what the templates group is all about and how it will assist the mentees uh, in the upcoming months. Uh, next, we have the best practices group, which is uh, led by Victoria. Currently, uh, we don't have her in the call. Uh, she joined the call, but she left due to some reasons. Uh, but uh, yeah, so she will be uh, introducing the best practices group. Uh, next, we have the onboarding group, which is led by Akanksha Rani. So Akanksha, you can go ahead and give us a brief idea of what the onboarding group is all about. Oh, sure. So hello, everyone. Myself, Akanksha, and um, I am a, a LFX mentee for Hyperledger onboarding project also. And I am also contributing here as chair of the onboarding team. Uh, uh, as a technical student, I am an AIML and web, web enthusiast and web developer and also an open source contributor and talking about onboarding. So uh, onboarding is basically a project which is which focuses on uh, six, uh, seven different aspects as which I have uh, uh, you know, concised into. And first, first is it focuses on research and analysis for all the uh, you know, for all the ways in which the user engages on the Hyperledger platform, then we have to uh, plan and scope that how and uh, uh, how uh, the process from the user to the Hyperledger site. So we basically ease the uh, distance and uh, the bridge the gap that is there between the users or the people who approach or uh, check out the Hyperledger site. So we work on that. Next, we work on design and development, which is basically the web, 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 inter, uh, web page interface and the uh, website uh, remodulation. Uh, then talking about the fourth thing, we work on the testing and feedback. So um, once we, you know, we make a design or wireframe ready, we asked to, we ask uh, the mentors for the feedback and, and we work on that. Uh, then talking about collaboration and communication. So since I am an Alex, I have I am a LFX mentee. So I have also a team under me, uh, in which there are different people who will, who are collaborating with me uh, and helping me with the project, and they'll be helping me in the upcoming weeks also. So the, it's about that also. And uh, uh, lastly, it's bas basically we work on the refinement of the Hyperledger community and the website. So that's how the onboarding works out. Uh, thank you so much, Akanksha, for giving us a detailed idea of what the onboarding group is uh, all about and how it will assist uh, the Hyperledger projects in, uh, in the various documentation needs. So next, uh, we have the user guides group, which is led by Agnes. Uh, Agnes, are you there on the call? Okay, so, so she is currently not here in the call, but uh, she will be giving us a brief idea of the user guides group. And uh, this is uh, the last slide. So this was uh, the presentation all about. Uh, so in this meet, we couldn't have uh, Jan, Luca, Victoria, and Agnes. I will be uh, talking with each of them over LinkedIn and in short that you know they are present in the Thursday meet. Uh, so that was all about the presentation. Uh, Bobby, do you have anything to say or any modifications? I have, that? yes, two suggestions. First suggestion is add an ending slide that just says questions or thank you and questions. And when sure. you're finished, it's, it's a nice, for a presentation, it's a nice way to flow to the end to show that sops, that last slide. So everybody knows like it's done and question, you know, like it's, it's, a, it's a nice ending. And just the second suggestion is to everyone on the call, the maintainers at the TOC are very uh, allergic to people asking them to do work. So it has to be their idea. So just be very careful when we're talking about templates and new suggestions that you're not in any way suggesting that they go back and fix documentation. 
our suggestions are just moving forward. So just always make sure you, you're, you're, are, they know that our suggestions are for their future work, that we want no one to go back and correct anything. Um, this is just suggestions moving forward because they get like really like that would be the only thing they'll get out of the presentation is you're asking me to do something. <laughs> so just just be mindful of how you word um, our suggestions to them that you're not asking them to go back and fix. You're looking forward to when they're doing new stuff. Um, other than that, it was fabulous, fabulous presentation. I applaud. Um, and again, if anyone doesn't show up, um, and anyone on the call uh, wants to sub for them, that's great. Or you can throw me in Arunima anywhere if there's yeah. no one there and a slide is blank. Um, I will step in or you can step in. Doesn't okay. matter um, if the people don't or do or do not show up. We can, you know, just work through that. But everything looked great. I can't wait. Okay, that's great. So uh, the main thing is that we should make keep in mind that, you know, we are giving suggestions uh, for future work, something that we can build on, not that yes. uh, asking them to go ahead and make the changes, right? Something. Yeah, they don't want to do work. They want to just have like if they're they want this task force to support what they're doing moving forward. They don't want to feel punitive in that they have to go back and fix. So everything is perfect the way it is, but going forward, here you go. Okay. I yeah, suggested it. politely. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. But they all like when we did the survey, every maintainer wants suggestions moving forward, but nobody wants to go back and fix their work. Okay, got it. That's it. And that they'll it, it's going to be well received. Uh the TOC has canceled two meetings in a row, so we haven't met in like three weeks. So this will be a nice. Nice way to uh, get back into the flow um, after summer break. So I'm very excited. And I hope everyone, if you're not presenting, comes on the call for support and it'll be great. Okay, thank you so much, Bobby. I got it. And I will just look into the wordings of each of the slides and make sure that everything is polite and... and uh... Yeah, no, no, the wording was fine. I think it just, at one point, somebody said uh, the word fix when they were talking and I'm like, oh, no, 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 no fix. Moving forward, no fix. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> so, I got it. Okay, and, and again, it's just the verbiage and I think everybody here understands, like, you know, it's just, you're very particular about when you assign them jobs. They're like, Ugh. Okay, I got it. Thank you so much, Bobby, for the suggestions. And oh, well, thank you for all this work. You've done a great job and I look forward to seeing you present on Thursday. Yeah, sure. All right. I will see you Thursday. Have a great day. Evening. Have a great sleep. Oh, thank you, Bobby. And also, I just wanted to talk to the onboarding people since uh, some of them are here. So can I just take up after, you know? Yeah, I'm just leaving now. You can take the call for as long as you want. Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. Okay, you can go ahead. Um, yeah. Aruma, talking... if you have anything else, you can discuss with the people from documentation. Then after that, I can talk. Uh, no, nothing more to discuss. We will have the presentation on Thursday and uh, you all did a great job uh, like talking about each of the subjects. So nothing more to say. All the best for the presentation on Thursday and account for the call is yours. You can go ahead and have your discussion. Thank you. Sure, sure. Thank you, Arunama. Um, Hello everyone. Uh, am I audible enough? Uh, I think so. Balbir, Ashwin, Shubham, and Kajal had uh, filled up for the onboarding part. If I'm not wrong. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, all of you are here on call. Can you just just give me a heads up? Yeah, we are there so that we can I can yeah, watch. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Shubham, are you there? Yeah, cool. So yeah, firstly, since we didn't have any meet till now, so I just wanted to ask uh, that uh, all four of you, you all are interested in contributing and also since Kajal is already contributing to documentation, will it be okay with you? Firstly, I wanted yeah. to ask. Yeah, okay. it works. Cool. So uh, I, I had discussed with uh, 
George regarding the project since uh, I have not invited you to the meeting call because it would be a bit difficult for you to understand uh, since you were in there from scratch. So uh, soon you'll be joining the call with John as well. So I'll just share my screen and share some few things that will may, uh, would be that that would make it easier for you to understand the flow of onboarding. Just give me a second. I'm just sharing my screen. Okay. So. Is my screen visible, guys? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is, there are different aspects to onboarding and talking about the things that we'll, I will be working on right now would be three of them, which I had discussed with Ben in the last meet. First, you know, first would be uh, the analyzing the traffic flow. So what exactly it is that uh, there are so certain pages, uh, first and third are very interrelated. There are certain pages on Hyperledger where the engagement is more like, for example, uh, if someone is working on Bevel's uh, Bevel page, Be Bevel is a project. So we know that people go to that page uh, a lot and if there is uh, 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 the, they approach more to th those pages. So we'll be focusing on that uh, that aspect and you we, we won't be working out on it right now because we need to talk to Ben regarding it. So the main thing we'll be working on is the second point, if you guys can see, the design changes. So uh, I guess uh, some of you had uh, raised your hands for working on Figma earlier. Um, who who were, was there? Are both of you there on call? Uh, I was. Um, okay. And uh, there was one more person who has told that they have worked in Figma and design before. So anyhow, uh, so what exactly if you haven't worked on it? So I'll recommend that you should, you know, start exploring Figma. If anyone of you has never worked, it's a very amazing place for uh, making wireframes or designs. Uh, basically for uh, whenever we make a site so figma is basically to make a layout for how exactly the website look like if any one of you is not aware of what exactly figma is so this is we what we have to do is as uh, doc, uh, uh, just a second i'll just open up a link it would be easier for you to understand so uh, the hyperledger website it is already there but we basically have to ease the access of people so that people can just click it over and go to the page that they are looking for they don't need to go we have to make it easier to understand that uh, you know the site is very e user friendly we have to make that so the right now if you can see the hyperledger website just a second i'll just show you mm. I have received a design template by Bobby. If you can see the documentation ta task force. So this is the Canva design shared by Ben. So keeping this uh, theme in reference, we have to uh, make different designs based on personas. So what are these personas? I'll just uh, tell you over. So this is the new Hyperledger, Hycon and Hyperledger. This, this is the initial theme of our uh, website. If you guys can see, we have to work along with this and make a start here user guide. What exactly is start here user guide is whenever a, sub, a person goes to the Hyperledger site, I'll just open the Hyperledger site and make it easier for you to understand. Yeah, just a second. This is the site right now. Okay, so if you can see this is a very basic minimal site so we basically have to like if someone has to you know uh, need we if you open it for the first time you won't understand what exactly it is this is and how to get started so uh, what are the ch changes that uh, we can uh, see that you couldn't we can have a start here button here or something like that so i just want the views from you all and you know if you guys can work upon a design that you feel that would be better for understanding how exactly we can uh, put up different changes so it is easier for the users to engage with. So there are different personas. I'll open up that so that it is easier for you to understand which personas we need to work on. Just a second task. I'll take up doubts after this. I know it's a bit difficult to understand at first, but I'm just, you know, just saying everything for once so that there is a proper flow. At least you can understand the flow that what exactly we are working on. 
in onboarding. Just a second, where is that link? Uh, this is the GitHub repo basically for uh, start here guide. So if you guys, uh, of course, I guess you have been uh, open source contributor. That's why you are interested in here or even a, a beginner can, you know, uh, uh, contribute. So this is the basic start here page of Hyperledger where we will be working on the website. Just introducing everything to you and don't worry about the links. I can share that uh, over to you afterwards also. This is the Hyperledger site. No, I don't want this. Just a second. I'll explain the personas and even share the link for you so that if you guys are interested and start on making some, you know, you just have to make a, uh, you have to take reference and make a, a navigation, a navigation page where it is easier for the personas to go over and just be there on the right page with a single click. So, what exactly was the page name? I'm boarding, I guess. Um, yeah, firstly, I'll just give you the project plan and I'll also share the link with you here on the chat and also I'll share it on the group as well, the WhatsApp group. So this is our, the this is the project plan of how we'll be working on for the next few months. So firstly, this is an initial one. Uh, we'll be you know, changing it according to what exactly we'll be needing. So this is the project plan that I had made. And so sorry that I couldn't be much active because I was busy making this and discuss discussing with John. So firstly, uh, we will have to, the, the 12th uh, June to 16th June phase has been over. And you guys have joined me in the next week of our project which is basically we'll be working on the user experience the you and uh, ux and the you know the in, uh, start start here page this is what we'll be working on this week after this week we'll be starting with the dashboard thing the main uh we have to, we'll be working on the user engagement parts but this week we have to make a certain uh, a, a figma basically uh, uh, in simple language we basically have to take reference from the earlier i'll also share you uh, uh, the earlier designs i have a figma link of what my mentor right now our mentor who is niku who he has already made and i am not able to find that link i have asked for it so you'll get an initial design of that that he had made at uh, last year so it would it would help you to understand but you don't have to make the same as him because uh, there are new define uh, new web website uh, designs that i had shared you the canva link i just showed it to you and i'll be sharing all those links with you with reference to those links with reference to what uh, niku had worked earlier you have to basically uh, give me different uh, like each one of you even if you develop a page just one figma page and give me a pay, uh, design then i'll just see over that what fits best then i will be working on that properly so i just need suggestions from each one of you uh with a design that you can work on in next two to three days if possible before wednesday because in one wednesday i can you know get it reviewed from the mentors that you guys have given different views and the one that fits best we can work on that for this week so if uh, possible just uh, you guys can start working on it from after the call and for i'll like uh, tomorrow or day after tomorrow just share the design with me that you think fits well and so yeah so so sorry just getting over to this uh, a project plan uh so, so the third thing that we'll be working on uh, from uh, july 11 to 24th uh that would be our dashboard and landing page of hyperledger so um regarding that will regarding this we'll discuss more because right now we are focused on starting here guide the navigation page after this the afterwards week we have this web page enhancement implement and then we'll be working on some search functionalities and i know it's a bit you know uh, out of blue that what exactly it is to understand but uh 
as we go on because i don't want to put everything at once that if we have to do this does this with weeks because we have a lot of time that's not like we have to submit something tomorrow so like uh, right now since i just introduced you the start here page the navigation page that is the only work that we have to work on this week we have to uh, if you guys have worked on figma it would be a bit easier for you to understand and you can just give one or two hours and just um, create a design so it's not a big deal but once uh, the one who have not work on figma yet so it would also help you to learn about web development since if a web, a web for a web developer it's very useful to make a figma design earlier so if you guys want to start with web development who has uh, not you know had had experience with react js or html css or these languages they can start over by learning figma a bit and even i can help you with that if you need any help you can pick me over any time so that is what we'll be working on till august uh, the web page after that we'll be working on the user engagement more and we have to create a seo friendly framework so what exactly is seo friendly framework it's basically um, inspired from google uh, analytics uh, i know you guys have not must have not hear, hear, heard of it and even if you have so google analytics is a platform where we manage a website or everything so john has told me all this so that's where i learned it from and i am sharing with you all for your knowledge as well so we'll be uh, working on hyperledger's seo friendly framework after in august there will be incorporating multiple banners and you know uh, hyperledger will be improving the hyperledger calendar because i know many of you even do, uh, didn't have link like for example uh, i had share link with you all and you have to attend the meet but if you go to hyperledger it's very difficult difficult for the users to find the meeting links so that is what will be work will be will work on then will be work on hyperledger blogs uh and uh, even then after that uh, blogs is a very you know it's easy to understand we just have to uh, create different links that people can click over and read the blogs on the trending topics by hyperledger or even in or in any technology so that's what we do from uh, august and september then in september basically we'll work on a uh, on our library we, we we basically have to create how we uh, like for example you uh, visit some website uh, for example some food health website so there uh, there are you know chances that you'll get a section of recommended videos that you should watch so that's what we'll be doing in hyperledger so that uh, it's uh, it's very uh, attractive uh, and user find it very useful who come over the hyperledger site and who uh, who just who just have to click over and learn about hyperledger how will we get started because uh, as you all some of you are already introduced to hyperledger but uh, those of you who haven't uh, you know uh, went to the website there it's not very easy to understand how to get the tutorials one but there are or, uh, there are already a lot of videos which users are not aware of so that's what we'll be working on uh, creating a youtube library of hyperledger on the website then after that we'll be working uh, from september to october uh, there will be uh, there are different sigs and working groups uh, so we will be that would be a bit easier work because as time you'll understand the workflow uh, right now i am not even i myself i'm not very you know good with understanding things that i have to do later on but right now what i can understand is uh, with flow with uh, with the time we will understand the workflow better i'll also learn up along with you only so that's what we'll be doing in september and october then after that october like uh, the work would be you know there is the, there is not much load of work you on you also you just have to give uh, uh, you uh, like one or two hours of in two days two days basically because we have weekly meeting so we are we all, almost have a week for working on so after that we'll be working on the deliverables basically and then there is a presentation that which in which uh, i would love to have you all uh, you know uh, since if you guys contribute for the next few months uh, it would be really great that you can give a uh, because this presentation is uh, happens in the global forum of of hyperledger so if you guys really work well and you know contribute to the project then you, uh, with john our mentor uh, you all can you know help me out and you can present in front with along with me like whatever whatever work that we have to do on so this is a small gist of what exactly our project task is for next few months uh, and i hope i am a bit clear but right now i would love to take some doubts from you all because i know i have said a lot so guys yeah
just tell me like whatever is in your mind after whatever i have explained it uh akansha i have uh, like doubt yeah. you said like she will be working we have four personas we will be working on each persona individually so uh, will you yeah. will you merge the uh, designs or like what because we have one website only mm-hmm. and we have to take care that for each of these personas so okay. like like how I, will i'll explain i'll explain so i talked about different personas so um, i just can you just give me a second i'll open up something that would be okay. easier for you to understand i'll just open up something okay. regarding the personas thing just a second till then anyone else has any question uh, can just you know ask me over i'll try if i can answer uh, so on figma do we need to create the design of whole website or just the navigation bar and the hero section okay so i'll share a design with you and uh, uh, the earlier design so it would be easier for you to you know uh, just you can make it you know there is a you can make a the whole web page you don't have to make basically you can just take the reference from what uh, uh, ben had created i had showed you the canva link right so okay. it is easier to understand what exactly the theme is the color is you can use the color palette if you have used the figma you know you must be knowing there is a color palette mm-hmm. and we can take to so you can take the reference from there so it would be easier for you to for making the web page so you just have to basically take the colors and take the design that ben had created and make the navigation changes on that so you will be focusing on the navigation part only on different based on different personas but uh, you can take reference from uh, the earlier designs okay okay just give me a second uh anyone else uh, has any more questions and even if you don't understand anything like what exactly is going on you can just talk to me casually i'm not you know someone that you have to take care while talking because i know balveer and uh, kajal had already been part but ashwin and uh, shubham has joined uh later on so you guys you know you can talk about it if anything else is uh, on the on your mind you can talk about it uh, hello yeah Uh, yeah, Shubham, yeah. 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 Uh, is this gonna be separate projects or we gonna make changes in existing hyperdata website? Means we are gonna make it from scratch or yeah, uh, just refactoring. Hmm. So uh, we don't have to make everything from scratch, of course, because we have the site already. If you search up hyperdata, you can see the site. We basically have to. contribute to that only we don't have to create something out of scratch what we have to create is we have to create a design that uh, you know that would be implemented in the main site so everything is there i showed you the github link right so that github link is basically the uh, link for that web page that website of hyperledger so whatever changes we are doing right now would be uh, uh, implemented on the existing site so nothing had to make uh, had to be made from the scratch am i clear am i clear right shubham i cleared your question uh yes cool yeah uh, akansha uh, i have doubt what is that uh, github repo for uh which one uh, tooling start, get start here i think that uh-huh. okay so we have the start here page i'll just show you just a second i'm not able to find certain things and i'll show you so uh, the start here page the it is basically the web uh, the github link for the start here guide page there is a page which is not developed properly and will be working on that also so it basically involves uh, the things you know uh, that uh, if someone enters like just uh, 
accesses the hyperledger site so uh, there is no start here guide so we have to contribute to that because last year the onboarding project was there i guess but with different name so they created the initial designs on figma i guess because that's what my mentor did but uh, they did not uh, actually you know implemented in the main site so we have to implement the start here guide in the main site that is our work Okay, okay, I guess I so, found something. Yeah, sorry, continue. So this repo is the code of uh, Hyperledger's website. Uh, just a second. I'm not sure about that, but what I know is, yeah, it's Hyperledger website. I guess the tooling one is just focused on different, you know, uh, aspects of the web page. But for the whole site, uh, I can just share you the link of that also. Just give me a second. Tooling one focuses on the hyperledger onboarding part, the project we will be working on. Just give me a second. Uh, yeah, I found that page as well. So yeah, this is the repo that we'll be working on and we'll be contributing the for the web website part but right now we won't be working on that because uh, we have to first make a design first right if you guys are web developers then you will know that we have to create a design first for anything so this week we have to create that and i'm just i'll just share my screen as well just a second okay so this these are the different personas uh kajal had asked the doubt about just give me a second. It's opening up. See, Kajal. So these are the different personas, SIG chairs, community contributors, maintainers, TOC members, new code contributors, solution providers, right? So one, two, three, four, five. How, huh? Okay, six of them are. So what exactly we have to do is we go on this Hyperledger site. Um, and these are six personas, right? So we have to create a design basically so that you know i come to the site do you see any option for these people con con contributors or sig chairs or what were the personas uh, just a second uh, what exactly is this happening i'm not able to click over there hmm. So what exactly I was talking about is, uh, this is the initial site of Hyperledger. So we don't see any option for a person you know, who just enters. Uh, we don't know who he's a contributor or he's a, S, he's an, he's a SID chair or he's, um, what are the six personas? I'm myself, you know. Yeah, so yeah. So these are the six personas, right? So um, the person doesn't know, or we, or sorry, the site, we, the site uh, handlers don't know who is approaching the site. So for example, a person is a TOC member. It is same for him. It is same for the new code contributor. It's, it's same for maintainers. And it is very difficult to get over a guide, you know. So we basically have to include all these six uh, people into the navigation bar. Or, or, or I would like to love, you know, I would love to get some input from you. Like, what do you think? Like, if, uh, if there are six members, uh, six uh, different personas, and any one of them enters the site, so how can we improve uh, the accessibility that he is not confused? That, uh, like, if you see the site right now, you won't be able to get exactly like how exactly uh, we'll understand that what is for what. Like we don't, we will be confused. So what do you think that uh, because John had and um, John and I, I had discussed uh, that navigation bar would be the best option. So that's what I told you guys that we have a section for that. And for different personas, we can just create like these six personas and uh, th that will take them to a page where they there is a guide for that, them they will understand the project. So do you think the navigation one is a good idea or do you guys have any other uh, opinion from your side that we have a different button here in somewhere in the site? What do you guys think? Uh, are we going to make the changes at the home page? Like, yeah, we can, we can ask 
for or like what are they like are they you see number or what then we can navigate because i think uh, when we will be adding more six options in the home page then are we going to uh, remove this learn use participate events like what no no uh, yeah so just a second uh, just like for example we have this participation uh, this uh, column right so the, we the, we have collaboration tool contribute to coding but uh, there is no option that you know uh, for a person for for the personas it's it's a general thing join the community group if we click on that so where it takes up is uh, just a second so yeah so it's not you know focused on different persona it's just a general view of where people yeah. can understand so we have to work on you know we have to create a different uh, 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 we have to create a navigation part uh, that would be that, that can be in a way of different button and i'm not sure about replacing or removing something but there can be a addition right there is space we can even add that like whatever you guys feel is better because when you when you create a design it you, you understand then only that it looks good or bad i add one more part here and it would be look i don't know right now i am just saying that you know we can just add this but i don't know until we, i see the design so that's why i am telling you like if you can guys can work on different this is not the site you have to work on you have to work on the theme that i'll be sharing you uh in the after the meeting i'll share you the link of the that canva link and also the previous design so based on that uh, understand you understand from that and based on that theme you can make changes to the navigation portion and you can just create a um, you know portion here where um, you guys can even work on one figma link only we all can collaborate or you guys want to uh, participate separately what do you guys uh, recommend we can work on single figma okay that would be cool like someone can you know uh, take up the charge of uh, that uh, um, making the web page and someone can pay take part that would be better right what do you guys what do you believe do you think okay that would be fine i'm working on one okay cool one. so what i'll do is i'll create a figma link and you guys can join in over there uh, someone has a few like uh, figma premium or pro someone has that also no i don't have it okay i guess i'll have i have that or i'll just see that if i have because i had that github pack and they give gave it with that and i'm not sure if, if it has expired give it the github the uh, student tech then i can also avail for that sorry uh, my uh, premium comes with a student github student tech then i can also avail for it okay cool just check it over there it was there last year i guess i'm not sure about it right now because they even removed canva from it canva was also there yes mm -hmm. yes so okay. that is a very big saddening saddening thing but never mind uh, if pro is there no it's it's a bit easier but we can work on the normal ones as well but pro if we have this feature we can make different pages you know we can avail different uh, options it's good but never mind i share the link with there and we can work on that uh, uh, i was telling yeah so i'll just continue so what i was thinking so like this is the navigation page so you guys can even you know it's not because i am saying that we can create a navigation part and make different personas it's just my view if you guys think like this is a site as a person who is a new beginner you can try it like that you know you are uh, a contributor like for example uh, no you are a contributor so you come to the site so what do you guys think that would be easier for you to go here and find or uh, have a button here so you guys can try that out by uh, making that first because you won't understand it until you make it so that's a thing and also like this is the page and we will be working on this also but mainly this uh, this week we have to focus on navigation and persona and that's all right i guess for the website thing and this is the canva design just a second mm -hmm. documentation standards yeah bobby is of great help i guess there was one more link which i want to share with you all and i'm not able to find that there was one more task force of onboarding mm. 
that is it. This is the side. No, no, I don't want this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here I'll share, I'll just copy this link because I myself get lost. I'll just copy this link as well on the chat. Okay, so this is the place where you can learn more about onboarding. Uh, see, so persona sector overview. So these are different uh, sectors of personas. For whenever when you're making the navigation part, you can just you know take care of these. I guess. Oh, sorry, there is a mistake I did. I guess. Uh, I'm not sure about one thing that these are the six personas or we have to focus on these four because that's what I had asked John as well. I'm a bit confused about that, but never mind. I guess uh, these are the different personas you have to work on. Just work on these six personas because these are the main uh, personas that, that are working with Hyperledger right now. And these are the different sectors uh, that where these guys come from, right? So uh, the developer community, these, people are there and we have to work on this as well but we'll be work we'll be working on it after this not right now after once we have created you know easy easy access to those six personas then we can work on different sectors because uh, for example you know these people are also there we have to take care of each and every person that visits hyperledger sites so that's at work that if that person comes over here and he doesn't have to, you know, shut down the site or, you know, go back just because he didn't find the right option where to go to. So these people like these, this sector and the people involved in these sectors, we have to work on that also. But right now we'll be working on this one, these six personas and right, uh, these are the one, two, three, five, six. Yeah. yeah. These are the personas. Uh, yeah. Can we get uh, some information log, uh, like uh, how the SIG chair would interact with the website and what are their needs, like maintainers, what are their needs? Like exactly. for uh, beginner yeah. coders uh, uh, mm -hmm. who want to contribute to project, we can get it like we also have been the first time contributor, but uh, mm -hmm. about maintainers and other, we don't know the air requirements. Okay, so very like you, you raise the best point right now. And that is what is the work uh, of documentation people. So right now you guys can give me whatever you said, just, you know, give me a written part of these, like we need uh, this and this and this. I'll just, you know, I have to uh, send it, it to the documentation uh, one because I'm also there. So they have, they will be, you know, preparing the, that uh, thing that uh, user guide thing so they'll be making uh these different guides like whatever they'll be reaching out to different groups like for example kajal which project are you working on uh mine is template no uh, i guess uh, i guess you're working on some project right now yes yes a yeah. uh, bevel and uh -huh. Yeah, Be Bevel and uh, Capti. So she's working on that, right? So what uh, exactly, uh, since, since she, she is in both of them. So when I'll tell them that, you know, we need uh, uh, details about these people, the, these SIGs here. So uh, Arunima, like the project head. So either she or the people from uh, the documentation, they'll reach out to these people and uh, they'll give, a, give us the information about these people. So yeah, definitely we'll get the information about SIG chairs, SIG members, QC members, maintainers. And as a contributors, we have of ours, but still like she'll reach out to more contributors who have, have been a past contributor and all so these this is a work of documentation and that is why that project is made so our work is to you know uh, create a link of uh, uh, reach of basically create something that uh, makes it for the user to reach those user guides right if i am not able to like i guess i am able to explain it to you uh, yeah so just, you know, whatever thing is required, we have uh, the WhatsApp group or even I'll recommend like if you guys are active on Discord, I can even check over there. But 
uh, there is a thread there like for the hyperledger community uh, i share, shared the link with you you can discuss it over there also and on whatsapp also there is like there is no issue in that i'll recommend whatever is of your convenience just share everything with me so that i can you know work on that and i can reach out to the uh, project maintainer of or different people sorry i don't have to reach out to them uh, arunima will do that and i'll get the information whatever is required for the website so this is how it went uh, just give me a second so website peter i'll just i have to share something with you mm. there was one more task force page um see like whatever i was saying uh, it is there so the, the this the, this is these are the different navigation option so you have to make something that is that aligns with the design that uh, ben has shared and it involves uh, and uh, it involves the thing that uh, navigate we can do in the navigation bar for ease access of the personas and regarding the four personas i'll still clear it out that these those are the sigs i guess that is what we have to work on these are the uh, different personas and yeah we'll be working on that only and uh, just a second yeah these are the different task forces no i am not seeing that i just want that one more link and just a second oh uh, it's a bit difficult for me as well you know i have to uh, be in contact with these people who are not responding ben and david and i'm really trying that they contact me. yeah there it is got it just a second niku had worked on this mm okay so see guys so niku like uh, who is now a mentor so he he created these figma designs just a second i'll just zoomify which these were not implemented last year because the project ended but we have to do that so what he did uh, i'll just show you his work because he did a did an amazing job creating the figma designs i loved her, his designs why is the quality so bad man okay i had zoomed it that way never mind so yeah see i guess you guys can just get the idea what he did so these are the uh, this is the actual side of hyper this was the actual side of hyperledger right now it's not like that see the similar one but uh, earlier so this is what niku made carousel uh, if, if you have like worked with figma you know so he made this he made the, all these things and uh, he made uh, the user guides for these different de for developers for contributors for different one so we basically have to work on that similar thing but since he did not did it specifically focused on the different uh, persona so we have to do that and yeah so he had focused on developers new community members business and learning resources okay so right mm guys i am a bit confused myself that we have to work on the different sectors or on the personas so i'll have i'll just clear it out with the john after this call also till then you can just you know start making on the website uh, but uh, regarding that i'll mail him and ask him that uh, what should i focus on uh, whether the different sectors like niku had did developers new community members business or the different personas so i'll ask about that but i just wanted to show you this is what he did and you guys can also work like this and make some you know initial design so that we can work on that and our goal this year is that na that this will be this should be implemented on the uh, main site that is what, why this project is still going on because the uh, designs have not been incorporated yet and we'll have to do that so um, this is the these are the screenshots of what i showed you already 
the we ha I had recommended my changes. These are the same things. Mm, um, trending community activity. Yeah, everything is just what I just explained to you. The YouTube videos, everything. So we'll work. Yeah, with time, I guess it would be easier for you and me as well because I am also very new to Hyperledger. I don't. I am. I am into web development, but I'm not much used to Hyperledger. So I'll understand it along with you only. And whatever I understand, I'll just ex ex explain it to you. And I guess, yeah, I'm done for today. I'll share all the resources and all the links after the meeting with you all. So it is easier for you to understand. And in case there is anything else that, you know, there is any problem or anything, you can just ping me over. I'll just copy this thing. Uh, this Hello. I guess she's disconnected. Uh, I Call said... drop or we can leave her. Yeah. Uh... I'm extremely sorry, guys. I just had to, you know, there was a network problem. So, yeah, I guess I was clear with it. And uh, any more thing that you guys, you know, have doubt on, you can just ask me over and we can wrap up after that. Akansha, can you explain what exactly this onboarding project is? Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. So, yeah, I, 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 as I had already said before, but yeah, I'll just, uh, you know, speak up in a simpler language uh, that, you know, this onboarding project, project is basically last year what happened. They wanted uh, the Hyperledger site is not as user friendly as it should be. So uh, that is why they made this so that it's easier for anyone from any project, whether it's Bevel, whether it's Aries. There are different projects under Hyperledger. If you guys applied, then you already you must be already knowing that there are different projects, ADs and all. So what happened that our work exactly is that, you know, someone who is from that project or someone who will want to apply to that project or someone who is already contributing or uh, the mentor or the TOC member or anyone else, you know, involved with their specific project, uh, it, it is easier for uh, them to reach to that page when they open up the hyperledger site so last year there were different designs that were created on figma but though they, they those could not be incorporated because some uh, or other reasons and this year that's that project is continued and uh since the this year the theme is also being changed so that is a big uh thing that has happened last year the theme was same only so uh, the designs that uh, we have received from Ben will be using that theme. There would be a new theme. So we have to create, create, a, create a design based on that theme, right? And we have to uh, make, we have to redesign the Hyperledger website uh, like that. So that is one thing we have to work on. And uh, other than that, we have to create wireframes right now. Uh, so uh, these wireframes would be converted to the web pages that we'll be creating. Then those uh, web pages, uh, the web pages, the designs would be uh, coded, and you know uh, we will be uh, actually working on the website. So we basically uh, we are basically working on the redevelopment of the of the Hyperledger website uh, for uh, a better user engagement on a better uh, user design. 
so that is what exa uh, exactly our work like if i am clear right now you can just tell me yeah yeah understood okay cool anyone else has any more doubt or we can just wrap up uh, i yeah, guess we can get okay cool so uh, anyhow uh, uh, who all are there on the call i'll just note them shinji is also there shinji uh, hello if you are there hi i guess he has or she has just joined never mind so uh, ashwin balveer kajal and shubham uh, you guys are already there on the project and i guess you are interested in working as what i can infer from now so any if there is any problem or anything just ping me over on any uh, uh, communication platform i'll try to be active as much i can and yeah let's work on it after the call i'll be sharing sharing the uh, new figma link where we all can collaborate and work and you know uh, if uh, there are the re designs are really good and uh, ben uh, ben i'm sorry the john approves them then you can we can start on the uh, final you know working on the uh, this uh, uh, what is that page the landing page we can work we can it's, we can start working on the landing page as well if the design fits well design fits well so uh, if there is any problem just ping me over and i guess yeah uh, have a good night guys see you all in the next call bye bye okay bye